Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you six surprising ways to use your Instant Pot. Hi, I'm Karen Peterson, and I run the website 365 Days of Slow and Pressure Cooking. I share Instant Pot and slow cooker recipes with you for every day of the year. Here on YouTube, I share Instant Pot stuff with you every week. And today I'm going to be sharing with you six surprising things that you might not have known that you could do with your Instant Pot. I hope you subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment on something surprising that you've made in your Instant Pot. I'd love to know. Let's get on to those six surprising things to make in your Instant Pot. Number one, you can use your Instant Pot to raise your bread dough faster than it normally would just sitting on your kitchen counter. Here's how I do it. First, make the dough. I've done that already. If you want the recipe that I'm using, I'm making a rosemary bread. That is my friend Jill's recipe. I'm gonna actually put the recipe in the notes below. So if you want that, you can get that. Um, so I have my bread dough here. I have my Instant Pot. What I'm gonna do is just kind of um, put a little bit of oil in the bottom of the Instant Pot so that the bread dough doesn't stick. And swirl it around. Take the bread dough and put it in your Instant Pot. We're gonna use our yogurt button to help raise the bread dough. Push the yogurt button, then use the adjust button to cycle through to where it says less. And it doesn't matter that it says 24 hours on there, don't worry about that. So one thing that you're gonna definitely wanna to remember to do is not use the lid. The problem with using the lid that people have had is that the bread dough will rise so high that it actually pushes up this little valve, this, this thing right now, and that indicates to the technical part of your Instant Pot that it's under pressure and not to let you open the lid. So people have actually gotten their lid stuck for good uh, because the dough has pushed up on that valve. So what I like to do is just use a plate. I have a plate that fits on there very nice and just set it right on top. You can also use a glass lid. Just nothing that has that valve on it. Okay, you can see that it's just been in just over 33 minutes and it has raised up quite a bit, twice as much as it was before. And this recipe indicates that you're supposed to let it raise by half. So we're good on the raising. My recipe indicated to split it in half and make it into two loaves and put it on a cookie sheet and let it raise again for another um, 30 minutes or so. It's been 30 minutes and the bread dough looks like it's ready to go in the oven. This bread only needs 15 to 20 minutes to bake at 375. Ready to dig into my bread. Doesn't it look so good? Number two. Have you ever needed to make a recipe that called for a bunch of chopped hard boiled eggs? Watch this next thing that I do with my Instant Pot. You're gonna love it. I'm using this stainless steel one. Spray it with nonstick cooking spray. This is important or else the eggs will just totally stick to the bottom and it will kind of defeat the purpose. I have six eggs I'm going to crack into my pan. You can use more than six eggs, but that's just how many I'm going to be making today. I have this cool silicone sling that serves as a kind of a trivet too. So I'm gonna be using that. Put the pan on top of your sling or your trivet and put it into your pot. However, before we do that, I'm going to add in one cup of water into the bottom of my Instant Pot. And then I'm gonna lower the sling into the bottom. Make sure your valve is set to sealing and set your manual or your pressure cook button to five minutes. Once the five minutes is up, it's gonna say L and then the pot is going to start counting up. Let it count to five minutes and then we'll release the rest of the pressure. Whoops, I let it go for 11 minutes instead of five, but it should still be okay. <laughs> I'm gonna release the pressure. Remove the lid. Take out the pan. You can see the eggs are cooked inside of this stainless steel pan. Dump the eggs onto a cutting board. 
one big loaf of eggs. And then chop. And then you have perfectly done hard boiled eggs that you didn't have to peel. And you can use these in a cob salad or put them in egg salad or avocado egg salad or potato salad. Whatever you choose to do with your eggs, they are delicious and they're perfectly cooked. I'm gonna put mine in an airtight container in the refrigerator until I'm ready to use them. Number three, a quick thaw for ground meats. Today I'm gonna be teaching you a trick that I use all the time and it is defrosting meat in your Instant Pot so that you can use it in another recipe. For example, I wanna make this creamy noodles and it has, it calls for browning your ground beef first. But my, brown, my ground beef is totally frozen solid. So I just need to get it defrosted enough so that I can break it apart with a spoon and start browning it. So in order to do that, all you need to do is put a trivet in the bottom of your Instant Pot. This one came with my Instant Pot. This one I purchased and actually really love because it's a sling and a trivet all in one. So that's the one I'm going to be using today, but use whatever you have. Then put a cup or a cup and a half of water in the bottom. If you have an eight quart pot, you'll probably need two cups of water. I have the six quart pot. Then put your meat, your ground beef, ground chicken, ground turkey, whatever it is, a pound of it at a time. You actually do more than one pound at a time, but today I'm just doing one pound. And if it's frozen in one pound, then you're gonna need about five to six minutes of pressure cooking time to defrost it enough to break it apart. If it's frozen in a bigger chunk, like three pounds frozen all in one chunk, now that's gonna take a lot longer to uh, break apart, maybe triple the amount of time. So keep that in mind um, when you're trying to defrost your meat. Let's say you have two one pound increments of ground beef. That would still be the five to six minute cooking time. Ho hopefully that makes sense to you. All right, so just go ahead, put the lid on tight, valve on ceiling, and set the time to the manual pressure cook button. I'm gonna do six minutes, and uh, it's of course on high pressure, which is the default setting. The timer just beeped, so that's why it says, it starts with L, that just meaning lapse time since it's been done. So I'm gonna push the valve to venting. The pressure is released, so I'm removing the lid. Taking the meat out. And then I'm gonna just pour the juices down the drain in a minute here. Now I have this beef that's ready to brown. So I will push the saute button on my Instant Pot and add in the beef. I don't know if you could tell, but it kind of looks like it's done, but it's not done. <laughs> Just the outside looks like it's done, but it's not, and that's why you still need to brown it um, for the recipe that you're making. Sometimes when you use this method, there's gonna be like a big chunk that kind of doesn't get defrosted. But that's okay because you can just brown it like I'm doing and kind of break it up as you go. As it gets warm, you can just break it up and keep breaking it up and keep breaking it up until it's cooked. So that's the method I use to thaw meat to get it ready for another recipe. Number four, spaghetti squash. I love spaghetti squash because it is a lot healthier and lower carbs and lower calories than normal pasta. I used to hate to make it in the oven because it just took so long and it seemed like a hard process. I found the easiest and fastest way to make it and that is by using your Instant Pot. I have a six quart Instant Pot that I'm using and I bought a fairly small spaghetti squash. Sometimes those spaghetti squashes can be very large so you just want to make sure that it will be um, small enough to be able to fit inside of your Instant Pot. So that's the first thing is picking out the right size. Second, have a paring knife ready to go. I like to use um, this little tiny um, knife sharpener before I cut the squash just because it is um, a thick skin to get through. So I like to have a sharp knife ready. So I just go ahead and sharpen it a few times um, before I cut. If you want this little tiny gadget, you can get them on Amazon and I will link to it in the notes below. Most of the time when you see recipes, 
they say to cut the squash this way, but today we're cutting it this way. And I find that you get longer strands of spaghetti squash that way, and it fits nicer into your Instant Pot. So we're gonna cut it around the equator, I guess you could say. Just be careful that you have a good handle on the squash so it doesn't go flying. But you're gonna just kind of cut as best as you can through that tough skin. Once you get through, you're gonna see a bunch of gunk inside. You're gonna to wanna to remove that. It's kind of like the guts of a pumpkin. I like to use my ice cream scoop because it has these kind of sharp edges and you can just really dig in there and get it all out. You can also use just a regular spoon to kind of scrape the edges. So it should look nice and clean just like that when you're done. Go ahead and do the other side. I have both halves ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I put a trivet in the bottom of my Instant Pot. If you don't have one, you can get one on Amazon. I'll link to it. Then I'm gonna add in a cup of water. If you're using an eight quart pot, go ahead and use about two cups of water just so that it can come to pressure. And then we're gonna put these in here. And depending on the size of your squash, you might have to angle it to fit in. This one was small enough that it really fit in there very nicely. You can see that that's no problem at all. And cover your pot. Make sure the valve is set to sealing and not to venting. Go ahead and push the manual button or the pressure cook button and change it to seven minutes. Once the time is up, it will switch over to L and then it'll say 000, that just means lapse time. And move the valve from um, sealing to venting. Once all the pressure is released, you can go ahead and open up the pot. Spaghetti squash inside is gonna be really hot and just um, either wait till it cools down or you can use some sort of tongs to remove it. And sometimes if it's filled up with a little bit of water, so just dump the water out. Place it on a cutting board. And then I'm just gonna set this aside until it cools down a little bit and then shred it. So this is what it looks like cooked. You just grab a fork and you're just gonna kinda go like this and see how easily that comes out. It's still a little bit of hot, so I'm gonna put one of these oven mitts on to kinda hold it in place, but you should be able to scrape it completely clean. It just comes out very nicely in the Instant Pot. It just cooks it all the way through and you can use all that awesome, awesomeness. Okay, it looks like I got out all the flesh from both of these. So I'm just gonna discard those. Number five, using your Instant Pot as a double boiler to melt chocolate to dip pretzels, to dip strawberries, to dip whatever you want to dip. Um, this is especially useful like Christmas time when you're making candies and things like that. You're going to really love this method of using your Instant Pot as a double boiler. Here are the items that you will need for your chocolate dip pretzels. You'll need some wax paper or some parchment paper or a si silicone baking mat, something that enables the pretzels not to stick. You'll need some pretzels. I use the twisty kind. A bowl, a glass bowl, or a metal bowl works. Um, and then some melting chocolate. I use this dark chocolate from Ghirardelli brand. It's really good. But you can also use milk chocolate or white chocolate. You can use chocolate chips, but you'll have to add in a tablespoon of shortening with the chocolate chips so that they can be glossy and nice and smooth. For this recipe, we're going to use the Instant Pot like a double boiler. So, Add in two cups of water into the bottom of the Instant Pot and turn your Instant Pot to the saute setting and adjust it to more. Then find a glass bowl or a metal bowl that will fit nicely right on top of the Instant Pot. You see how it doesn't fall in? It just kind of sits right there. The water is going to heat up and we'll pour the chocolate into the bowl and the water will steam up at the bowl and get the chocolate all melty and delicious but it won't m burn the chocolate, which is the major problem when you're mi microwaving chocolate or trying to cook it in a pan on the stove. It just scorches so easy and burns and it just does not taste good. Still one of those chocolates for good measure. Eat it right now, I dare you. 
and then just wait a couple minutes until the chocolate starts melting. Every couple minutes come back with a spoon and just stir it as those chocolate discs melt. The water's really heating up so I turned the saute from the more button and I adjusted it down to the less button. And I'm just gonna keep stirring it until it's totally melted and smooth. Once the chocolate is totally melted, turn off your Instant Pot and then click it over to the Keep Warm setting. This will ensure that the chocolate stays melted and doesn't harden up while you're trying to dip your pretzels, but it's not gonna be boiling away in there. Get a long sheet of your wax paper or parchment paper out and then get those pretzels ready. We're gonna need um, pretzels and then a fork to dip the pretzels with. Take one pretzel at a time and place it on your fork and then just kind of dip it into the chocolate. Get it nice and dipped and then tap, 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 tap the sides of the bowl so that all the excess chocolate comes off and then you can place it on top of the parchment paper. And then you're gonna repeat this process over and over until all the chocolate is used up. If you'd like, you can add sprinkles to the chocolate dip pretzels. Make sure to put them on the pretzels when the pretzels are still wet or they won't stick very well. Here we are at the very end of the chocolate, just trying to use all of it as much as possible. You might need to get some sort of rubber scraper and kind of scrape all the chocolate into the middle just so that there's enough to be able to dip those last pretzels into. The pretzels only take about 10 minutes to dry and then you can put them in an airtight container. I like to use these plastic baggies and um, sometimes give them away as Christmas gifts. Number six, zero minute vegetables. I don't know if you've heard of using a zero minute pressure cooking time, but it is so fast. It's such an easy way to steam vegetables and get them perfectly done every time. Here are six vegetables that you can use the zero minute pressure cooking time with. I have my six quart Instant Pot ready to go. And I have my silicone steamer basket. I love this steamer basket. It's my favorite one. And it works well with a six or eight quart pot. I put the link to it in the notes below. It's probably around 12, 13 bucks on Amazon. I also have this metal steamer basket, which I like, but don't like quite as much just because it expands and contracts. And sometimes when taking the food out of the Instant Pot, you know, potatoes, for example, they kind of fall all over the counter. So I'm gonna use this red one today. First, I'm gonna put one and one half cups of water into the bottom of the Instant Pot liner. And you'll use this same method for any vegetable that you're steaming for zero minutes. Add in your uh, steamer basket. And then the first vegetable I'm going to try today is uh, cauliflower florets. And I have just cut up a whole head of cauliflower into florets and I'm adding them into the steamer basket. I'm gonna lock that lid into place and make sure the valve's set to sealing, not to venting. Then push the manual button or the pressure cook button depending on your model. Use the minus button to go all the way down to zero minutes. Once you get down to zero minutes, it's gonna click over to the on setting, meaning that it's building pressure this time. And it will take probably anywhere between five and 10 minutes to build the pressure. And uh, at that point, it's gonna switch over to this setting that says L, meaning that the pressure cooking time is over and you're ready to open up your pot. So click the valve over to venting and release any remaining pressure that is in the pot. Once the pressure is released, you can remove the lid safely and you have perfectly steamed cauliflower florets. And I love serving these with butter, salt and pepper, even a cheese sauce from time to time. The next vegetable is green beans. Now these are great with a zero or one minute cooking time depending on how well done you like them. 
we have a whole head of broccoli and I've cut them into larger florets or else they get a little too done. Asparagus is next and this one gets um, done in just the zero minute cooking time as well. We have zucchini that's sliced kind of thick, not too thick, not too thin. And they came out perfect. I love the zucchini. And finally, I have a package of frozen corn that I'm just throwing in there. Just steaming it up, getting it ready to eat. Butter, salt, and pepper. Oh, it is so good. So there you have it. Six vegetables with a zero-minute pressure cooking time.